In this video, we're going to give you simple explanations for runway markings. There are six major aspects to a runway's markings. First is the designator, then the center line, then the threshold, which includes several aspects, threshold bar, threshold markings, displaced thresholds, relocation of thresholds, as well as demarcation bars. We then have the aiming point, the touchdown zones, the side stripes, which also include shoulders. Ground markings at airports have two major colors, white and yellow. White represents runway operations. Yellow represents taxiing, areas not intended for aircraft, and holding positions. On occasion, you will have red. This shows that you are entering a runway. In very rare instances, you'll see green. Green is to highlight the areas not intended for aircraft, Usually yellow markings will be the only things you'll see, but when it's a little bit confusing and there's a lot of pavement, they may add green, such as here at LAX. Runway designators are the labels we give runways. They are two digits and they are based on the magnetic direction that they are pointing in for takeoff or landing. The magnetic compass is based on 360 degrees. To identify what label we give the runway, we take the three digit magnetic direction we round the last number and get rid of the zero. When you have multiple runways at an airport, you can have up to three runways pointing in the same direction. For instance, at Chicago O'Hare, there are three runways that have the designator of one zero. What you do in that case is you add a L for left, an R for right, or a C for center. If you only have two, then you use L for left or R for right. Runway center lines are the stripe lines running down the center of the runway. Pilots take off and land directly on top of these lines. This makes sure that they are taking off and landing in a straight line down the center of the runway. Before continuing on, if you find this information valuable, please consider donating. This type of instruction can cost you up to $70 an hour depending on the flight school you're at. My educational videos are based on airman certification standards, handbooks, and other documents that are put out by the Federal Aviation Administration. I also do my best to make these videos as simple as possible, avoiding any complex jargon. These videos do take a substantial amount of time to create. If you're unable to donate, a simple subscribe or a like on the video is much appreciated. Runway threshold markings identify the beginning of the runway. They can also tell you how wide the runway is. The threshold bar is the exact point at which the runway starts. Not all runways have a threshold bar. A displaced threshold means that the beginning of the runway is not the beginning of the pavement. You'll see white arrows pointing to the runway threshold bar and the threshold markings. You are able to take off while at the white arrows. However, you cannot land until you pass the threshold bar. If the arrows before the threshold bar are yellow, that means it's a taxiway. In that case, you cannot take off until you pass the white threshold bar. When you have a blast pad before a displaced threshold, you'll have a demarcation bar. These are yellow and you should not cross them. If you're playing Microsoft Flight Simulator, many of these displaced thresholds and demarcation bars are incorrect. Sometimes construction or maintenance will require part of the runway to be closed. When this happens, there will be a NOTAM, a Notice to Airmen, notifying you which part of the runway is out. The new marking they put down is usually a large, white, 10-foot wide threshold line that spans the entire runway. They may or may not remove the lines before the new threshold line, so it is your requirement to know exactly where that line is. The runway aiming point is two broad white stripes located 1,000 feet from the threshold, or the beginning, of the runway. This is a visual aiming point for pilots during landing. However, pilots are not required to land on the aiming point. They can land as soon as the threshold, which once again is the beginning of the runway. Runway touchdown zone markers help pilots identify what section of the runway they are landing on. These touchdown zone markers are spread out every 500 feet after the threshold or the beginning of the runway. 
and they do also include the aiming point marker, which we mentioned before. This means every time you pass another touchdown zone marker, you've gone another 500 feet. Some people get caught up on how many lines are on either side of the center line. The number of lines on either side of the center line will not give you accurate information. Just understand how many touchdown zone markers you have passed, and it will identify what section of the runway you're on. Runway side stripes are simply the edge of the runway. They are continuous white stripes that go all the way down the length of the runway, ensuring that you don't go off the side of the runway. Runway shoulder markings are on the outside of the side stripes. They are yellow in color, identifying that aircrafts are not meant to be on that side of the runway, even if there is pavement there. These explanations have been simplified based on FAA documents. If you'd like to see those documents, look at the links below. It's always a good idea to look at the documents yourself so you can better understand these concepts. Thank you for your time and support. If you have any questions or requests for future videos, put it in the comments below. Thank you.